that the DJI Mavic 3 Classic or the Mavic 3 in general is an absolute beast when it comes to doing any kind of video. And I've genuinely never had a drone that does video quite as well as this thing. I actually use my drone far less for video and actually more for photography. And let's be honest, there's only so much you can do with a camera and by camera, I mean a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And being able to take quality photos in the air at a different perspective, and it's as close as you'll get to having your own private helicopter tour and a damn sight cheaper too. The DJI Mavic 3 Classic, like its Mavic 3 counterparts, has a sensor of 20 megapixels and can take photos at a 4x3 aspect ratio or a 16x9 aspect ratio where it crops a little bit off the top and bottom of the 4x3. These 20 megapixels are part of the Hasselblad camera that it has on board and with the drone only having a fixed focal length and only a single camera, there is no option for an optical zoom. It can take photos in both JPEG and or DNG files which are very similar to RAW files which you would get on a standard digital camera. And because this thing has a variable aperture, you can almost treat it the exact same as you would do with a normal digital camera. You have full capability of altering the shutter speed, the ISO, and also the aperture. But why only 20 megapixels? The Air 2 had 48 megapixels, and that's like two to three years old. Now there's no confirmation as to why this drone or the rest of the Mavic 3s only has 20 megapixels from DJI, but I'd take a guess that because the size of the sensor is a four third sensor, you wanna get enough pixels on that sensor to take great quality video in terms of resolution, and this can do up to 5.1K, but at the same time, you don't want to overdo it and put more megapixels on it than you actually need. Sure, you could have 48 megapixels on the same size sensor, but if you look at any other cameras which are out there on the market. Cameras that have a large amount of megapixels normally suffer from poor low light performance, but also a poor sensor read off, giving you a rolling shutter. Pretty much for the most part, the less pixels you have on a sensor, the better for video it will be. The camera on the Mavic 3 Classic, like the other Mavic 3s, can only take photos in a landscape orientated position. It can't spin 90 degrees like its little brother, the Mavic 3 Mini, but this drone does have a few features which will actually allow you to take portrait orientated photos. When you're in photo mode, you do have the option to take panoramic photos. Panoramic photos can be taken in multiple ways, whether it's landscape, wide, or the one that I use more than anything, portrait. What this does is allow you to take three photos which will perfectly stitch together. You get a middle, a top, and a bottom. The Mavic 3 Classic will stitch them three photos together, store them on your memory card, and you're left with almost a 60 megapixel photo. For those of you wondering why it isn't exactly 60 megapixel photos, because you've taken three photos at 20 megapixels to stitch them together, if you've ever done that, you'll notice that it kind of goes like that and you want your photo to be straight on the sides, not, not curved. So it cuts the bit at the top off, bit at the bottom. But we ain't gonna get technical with that, so let's just, let's just keep moving. And let's be honest, having the Mavic 3 Classic do it automatically is much faster than you taking the photo, then moving the gimbal to the next position, taking the photo, moving it down, taking the photo. Does it in just a few seconds. But in fact, even though the Mavic 3 does that, it's not all that good. What I'm about to go into is something that I could possibly be wrong with. If I am, then please by all means speak up. Let me know down in the comment section below. But after searching on the internet, I'm pretty certain I'm right. When the Mavic 3 Classic takes a portrait panoramic photo, or any panoramic photo for that matter, it can take that photo in JPEG and DNG all at the same time. So far, so good, right? The issue comes actually later on when you're wanting to get the photos off of the memory card and we'll start editing with them. The panoramic photos for the JPEG images have been stitched together perfectly. They're fairly tall, so you will have to crop them, but that's not a major thing. But we don't want to deal with JPEGs. We want the DNGs, we want the raw files. But unfortunately, that process doesn't seem to happen with the DNG files. The DNG files are stored as separate files, so you get a middle, a top, and a bottom, and that's stored in a folder away on the memory card. Then if you've taken another panoramic photo, you'll have the same thing, a middle, a top, and a bottom, and they're stored in another folder separate to the original folder which we've just spoken about. Then depending on what your workflow is, that's gonna add a little bit of time. You need to go in each folder, take the DNG files, put them into your system, into your hard drive, drag them into Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever editing software you're using, and merge each panoramic photo together. Pretty much the same way as you'd do it if you were doing it the old school way of having to move the gimbal from middle, top to bottom. So yes, you may save a bit of time when the drone's up in the air, you're getting the photos, but when it comes around to editing, the workflow, it's gonna be a fair bit longer. But obviously you decide what's better for yourself. 
A few people made comments on previous videos that I've done about the Mavic 3 Classic. They've even emailed me and reached out on Instagram. I actually complained about the photo quality and saying that it's subpar to their expectations. Something to bear in mind is that this is a much lower resolution than it was on, let's say, the Mavic Air 2. Because of that, you may not be able to crop in and zoom in quite as much as you would like and still be able to retain the quality of the image. If you're wanting to work with more megapixels, then obviously the best thing to do is to take a panoramic shot, which will suit your scene a lot better and allow you to crop a lot more in post and keep the resolution fairly high. Overall, I'm quite happy with the quality of the Mavic 3 Classic when it comes to taking photos, but something I have found is that you have to expose your image correctly. Be a little bit more precise with the exposure because it's quite easy to add a fair bit of noise when it comes to shadows and having to boost them to be able to balance your image a lot more. Another thing that I found about the Mavic 3 Classic is that you have to sharpen the image a lot more than you would do with the normal photo, let's say from a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. But if I'm honest, that's nothing new. When it comes to DJI sensors, I've always found them to be a little bit softer than I actually like but I'm not complaining because I would soon have it a little bit too soft than overly sharp and not be able to do anything with it to reduce that sharpness. In the coming weeks, I will be making more content, posting more videos about the Mavic 3 Classic. So if there's anything you particularly want to see, let me know down in the comment section below. If I can make it happen, I will. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when them videos drop. And finally, thank you very much for watching and take care.